Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I must say it's uh, really hard to express my feelings just now. I'm so honored, I'm so happy to receive this prize. This is not, of course, only a prize for me. It's a prize for all these people who made the Estonian miracle possible. And I am so happy to have at least one of my cabinet ministers, Mr. Yuri Luik, with me today. Because uh, when you want to change the country, you couldn't do this alone. And you couldn't even do this with only with your government. Because only people who can change really something is your own people. And the task of government is empower these people, is to trust these people, to really to give to these people liberty, to make their choices, to have their way, and to make these miracles happen. I have grown up in the society where there was no liberty. And I understand very well what was just said by Milton Friedman, that it is sometimes in the free society's hard to understand what the liberty really is. Because when you have it, you couldn't define it. You can understand what the liberty is only when you've lost it. And when you're living your life in the society, the liberty is not existing, then you actually know how valuable this is. As it was soon said before, maybe some people think that I got this prize because the only book on economy which I have read is Milton Friedman, Free to Choose. <laughs> this is not absolutely true, I must say. <laughs> First of all, after the Milton Friedman book, I have read a lot of other books on economy. <laughs> Uh, but it's true that uh, that was really the first book on economy, what I, I read. Because I couldn't count the Marxist book about economy to be really books on, on economy, because they're all wrong. And they're dealing with a lot of fancy ideas which are not having anything to do with reality. The Ronald Reagan once said that... Uh, or ask the question, what is the difference between the Marxist and anti-Marxist? The Marxist is who have read the books of Karl Marx, and the anti-Marxist is who have understood them. <laughs> I must say, when you lived in the communist society, it was not very hard to understood how wrong these theories were. At the same time, when we started our way uh, to, to freedom, it was not very easy to choose the path. Because a lot of advisors, what we got from the Western countries, including the United States, gave us advice which was actually supporting the big state big government, uh, big expenditure, high taxes, progressive taxation, and so on. And in this context, I must say, it was very useful, again, to remember the Soviet time. Because the first time where I heard the name of Fried Milton Friedman was in deep Soviet time when I read from the newspapers or in some propaganda uh, newsletters that there is one very, very bad and dangerous economist in the Western world, and it's called the Milton Friedman. And I, I must say, in this time, I didn't have any idea what was the Milton Friedman thoughts, but uh, I was quite sure when it's so dangerous for the communist, then it is, must be a good man. <laughs> and... Um, And I still remember when I got then this first famous book uh, of Milton Friedman, which was translated then to Estonian language, Free to Choose, 
first of all, for me, it was interesting to look on the name because there was two words inside, free and choose, and both was absolutely intolerable for the communists because this was two things what the communists mostly hated, to be free and to choose. And the name was so excellent that I was so interested to read the book. And I found a lot of very good ideas from my point of view. As I am not an economist, it looked very logical for me. And in this time, I really didn't know that there are not very many countries have really introduced these ideas. And uh, first of all, I must say there was two main ideas what I learned. One was free trade and opening the economy, which was so well stressed by the Milton Friedman. And the other was the flat rate tax. And both look to be really the best ways to get your country forward. And to really, which impressed me in the Milton Friedman writings was his trust on freedom and on people. It was very clear that only when you empower the people and not take the all power on the hands of government, you can achieve something. Because not the governments are doing the reforms and creating the miracles, the people are. The government tasks are only to deliver them the chance to do this. And I think this was a very important lesson for me in all this reform process, what was ahead. Of course, when I then started to introduce these reforms, I must say I met a lot of Western experts who said that I am absolutely crazy, that uh, nobody has introduced the ideas of Milton Friedman, that the Milton Friedman is some hawky, very right-wing economist who is doing nothing about the economical theories and so on. But um, I must say I was then 32 years old. And when you're 32 years old, then you are not believing very much in older and clever people. <laughs> I must say for me, the Milton Friedman looked a very good man. <laughs> Uh, especially when I remembered that the communists hated him so much. <laughs> and uh, looking on this very good-looking, very well-educated economical experts, who I am absolutely sure knew a lot of more about the economy as I did, I had some doubts. Are their theories right? And I had my vision or my courage or my will as a 32 young man to press through these ideas, what I believed is leading my country to their freedom. And those ideas have been highly successful. We have really empowered the people in Estonia. We have really liberated them to make the choices to really do move the country forward. And the results, as you soon today have heard, in these videos and in other presentations are really astonishing. When you look to the Estonian now and you think the country in 1992, it's really hard to remember how it was. And it's not the government which has changed this. There are people. The government task have only been to give the people the chance to open the economy, to really do have the tax system which should not punish people who work more and who earn more but to encourage people to do something with their life, to really to create something, to be innovative, to look to the future, to dream, to realize their dreams. I think this is what its freedom is about. And in this context, of course, I'm especially again proud to receive this, namely, prize of Milton Friedman. The last prize was given for the most brilliant economist, Hernando de Soto, Soto, who have actually argued very brilliantly the first thesis of Karl Marx in the Communist Manifesto. This is confiscation of property. And I am very proud to receive the prize who have argued the next thesis of Karl Marx. This is the progressive income tax. And I'm so sorry to looking on the Western world to see this Marxist thinking so developed still because the progressive taxation is the grand idea of Karl Marx. One example where we see that the communism, which is declared to be dead is not dead so much 
When I'm walking in the streets of New York, I think that the same will happen in Chicago, and look to the shops where the T-shirts are, are, are in the office. I, I saw the pictures of the T-shirts of Che Guevara, Mao Zedong, Lenin, the big murderers of the 20th century, and I really don't understand where I'm gone. Is this a free country? Is the communist really dead? And when I'm looking on the attitude of all of us towards the communist dictatorships in China, because there is a communist dictatorship, nothing to say. Even when they run the more modest economical policy, there's still dictatorship, where even the Google didn't allow the word of democracy to be used in their computer system or internet systems. There are different countries in the world where we are not actually talking what the communism is and what the communists have done. And I think one reason why we see such of dictatorships coming from the South America, such populist dictatorship, is that we are not yet declared the communists to be such of evil ideology as the Nazis or other evil ideologies of the 20th century have been. I think this is one task which we are missed. We are underestimated the power of these ideas, of these evil ideas. And I can only, again, use this word because I remember how it was criticized to President Ronald Reagan when he used the wording of evil empire in the United States and in the Western world. And I remember from my own feelings how we searched the first politician who really said the truth, who was not afraid to say the truth. I think this is one what we must do more, not to be afraid to say the truth, not to be afraid to say what we are really thinking. And I really congratulate the Cato Institute for this work, what this institute is doing around the world, to deliver the message about the truth, about the message about the freedom and about the liberty. I really want to see that this very difficult task to really to move the liberty around the world will progress because without liberty we couldn't live. Our life is empty. Our life is meaningless. We are still there but we couldn't achieve what we want. Liberty is what gives us the oxygen. Liberty is what raises our spirit. And in this context, I can only thank again the Milton Friedman and all the institutions and all of you have supported this idea around the world. And when we all together move to this direction, we can really make this world a better place. Thank you. Yeah.